life is tough for everybody. So that's the way I, I try to, I'm not trying to be a superman, you know, to handle peace. You know, I'm just trying to make a peace, you know, I can finish and have a, a sense of art or life. So teaching in the very beginning, when I started working with performance, was always an artist that was referred to. I remember Marina Abramovich, she said, oh, there was an artist kind of related to the Gutai group and he jumped out of the window. He just jumped out of the window. And I remember her saying that. But then at some point I said, who actually was the artist who jumped out of the window? And then she started talking about Te Ching and that he had worked in the 70s in New York and he did pieces that were durational pieces, pieces that were at least a year long or exactly a year long. For one year, it's not me. I try to make it more difficult. Well, this is important. I try to make it more clear. One year is Earth around the sun. One year is, a, you know, it's a human calculated life, basically. Te Ching Si is born 1950 in Taiwan and grew up in a family with 15 siblings. He also loved painting when he was a child. He also went to art classes, but then decided he really wants to become an artist, but felt he could not really become an artist in the society that Taiwan was at that time. So he thought, how can I get to New York, which for him was the epicenter of arts at that time. And he decided I will actually train as a Marine soldier to get there. And then he jumped the ship in Philadelphia in 1974 and made his way to New York. There was one piece where he was in a cage, he had no indication of time passing, he couldn't telephone or read or watch TV or talk to a person. There was no windows, there was no daylight, night lights, there was no, literally no way to guess if just a day, an hour or a week had passed. So a very, very strict, a very extreme exploration of your own limits and of your own perception of your own being because what is being other than the time you have in your life. This exhibition does actually three things in a way. At the one time we tried to rewrite the canon of history of art because he is one of the most important figures of the 20th century. The second thing that is so important that people who don't know him and who are also not interested in art history, it doesn't matter, they will experience something. When you enter the exhibition, you feel an empty space, you get to know a bit about the arts, you read the text, but then you enter the main space and you see this room filled with 8,760 photos of him that he took during his performance every hour for one year. Yeah. So you see time and you feel time. Well, Sinam is my foundation of concept of all life. But of course, I put wasting time in our time in 24 hours, so I'm not waste, waste time, you know. Teaching's piece, the time clock piece, it's a metaphor of how discipline and how a certain rhythm is structuring your life like a very rigid structure. He had to go to the time clock every hour. And so a complete surveillance, a complete structure and dissection definition of a year of your life. Yeah, I missed 133 hours. I'm human, you know. It's a, but I'm not lazy for work, 97%. You know, I'm that record. You know, if I'm 40%, I miss it. Well, then people will say, Bad job, you know, basically I'm doing for the whole piece, you know, so. It reflects also our, our relationship to work, our relationship to, to leisure, our relationship to freedom. So it really is a piece that reflects on the human condition. What does it mean to be an artist? But what does it mean to be a human being waking up in the morning and what makes us get up and go to work or sleep or travel? I think it's really a piece that reflects us as human beings. My work, very big foundation is a repetition. Must be bored. But it's, when you say bored, it means it takes three day, four day, five day, week, then you feel bored. But you want to do a whole year, then serious, become no bored, that kind of so light. Bored is very light for, in life, you know. That means you have to be survival. You know what I mean? You have to think about how to make it continue. 
And the work we show in Berlin here at the Neue Nationalgalerie is the first time ever shown in Germany. It has been shown before in major institutions around the world. It was interesting to prepare this exhibition because in Germany he's not very well known. When I visited Teaching where he lives in New York, I don't think the neighbors know that he's a great artist, a legendary artist. He looks like a worker amongst workers and that's how he identifies himself as, as, as well. It was very interesting. He came to Berlin and the next day we saw him and he was in the exhibition and he said, Klaus, yesterday I took a bus and I just rode through the city and that is a little bit the way in all humility and how modest he is that he is just observing. And then he said, I can't walk so well because the jump out of the window, and then I thought the jump out of the window is exactly 50 years ago. So he lives with the consequences of his first performance piece 50 years until he's now 73. So he's one of the most rigid, one of the most clear, one of the no compromises artists I know. And think about migration, think about homelessness, think about our relationship to work, think about our relationship to freedom. I think there couldn't be a more pressing artist and a more pressing body of works and teaching at the moment.